so this will cover all and uh, i hope that this becomes really fruitful for uh, for you uh, being in uh, hptsc is the analytical part where we are subjected to analysis of uh, multi dimensional different types of product related to herbal and so uh, we will be sharing our uh, practical uh, knowledge on the same and hope uh, you benefit out of it uh, we have a chat box question answer session uh, where we'll take up few questions at the end of the session in the between uh, of the sessions if you have any questions uh, just feel free to write it down at the q and a box and we'll be happy to uh, reply to them so let us start this session and uh, i'll start sharing my screen uh, where we'll first uh, um, understand what we are going to talk about and uh, then we'll proceed with uh, the session so i start sharing my screen in case uh, there is any problem with your, uh, your visibility of the screen do let us know uh, if it is from our side we'll definitely solve it back so uh, our today's topic of discussion is about herbal data analysis and uh, when we come to the data part it is usually generated through a series of uh, you know preparations which includes the entire experimentation part and generating the data so right now when we start uh, with the uh, analysis uh, let us start with the very basics of understanding the experimental uh, fundamentals in hptlc and then we'll move on slowly into the data which we be being generated how to understand how to use the tools which are there in the instrument uh, uh, in the software and get the most out of it so let me start uh, so this is from my one of my old slides which i had stated for method development because uh, at the start of any experiment is your method requirement and uh, two things which uh, really come into the picture is the aim of your uh, final outcome so maybe for a qc department it is just testing of the drug uh, for a researcher it may be just a screening of samples to find something or correlation and things like that so for different aspects of uh, research work you have different uh, outcomes which are expected from this uh, analysis and that is why you know uh, when we talk about uh, doing analysis on hptlc it becomes much more flexible because no way uh, if if you are in any field you can easily apply it into your research work and get a good output to start with and then you go uh, into deep investigating into things so uh, let us start uh, the presentation and the very first part of any uh, development is to have these components in your place like uh, establishing an aim of the analysis as i told you there will be different perspectives because this will be highly important at the end of your research work for example if i am a formulator and i am preparing a novel formulation in the herbal field i will take an extract i will uh, prepare a formulation out of it and then i want to get it tested to justify whether the original formulation has those components or any modification is there this is one part of it the other part of of it is stability study i want to see till how much time it is stable third part of it any impurities being generated so there are multiple angles through which an analytical uh, work is involved and that is why it is very uh, it has to be very clear cut set into your aim that what is the end goal of your research work when i start uh, uh, we have come across to many queries we, they just come up and saying that we want to do an hptlc analysis but hptlc can do a many lot things what you wish to do is an important aspect so uh, definitely in my earlier lectures which we had uh, on uh, different aspects on hptlc you can just browse through them uh, through the online content and get to know what are the different aspects specially taken care of in the uh, C, uh, lecture series where I had a special dedicated session of applications and I showed different things which can be done on HPTLC. So please do refer that uh, and then you can uh, move further. So once the establishment of the aim is done very clearly, you have very things clarified what is expected and this aim will be only developed after literature survey i mean excuse me i have stated that point below that the literature survey but uh, generally if you are aiming that i want to see beta cetestrol or lupiol you need to do some literature work stating that whether this work has already been done on that particular plant or not otherwise you will be just mimicking the same work and creating a xerox copy of the work 
so which will not give you that kind of recognition or it may not be of that kind of uh, importance of course if somebody is from the qc department who is manufacturing things for them it will be important to see the uh, lupiol content and in that case if already a paper is there they will use that and do the testing for finding out so uh, it is very important in both the aspects like literature, literature survey there are many things associated with literature survey again in my uh, presentation of method development we had touched upon stating that what are the different angles uh, when the literature survey is divided like whether everything is already present or a somewhat related material is present uh, to it and same kind of a model can be adopted or it may be totally something very different which is very novel which is coming up but you can use uh, you know combinations and permutations if the molecule is similar for example if you uh, do a differentiation bet between beta cetestrol and stigmasterol it will come at the same rf value so there you require really some kind of an expertise like a coating on the plate to get these molecules separated and things like that so uh, the literature survey is very key part of understanding uh, uh, whether the aim is proper for the analysis then we go into the standards and samples and uh, uh, obtain the standards and samples now a uh, year again uh, you know i have a formulation and many people ask us we want to do an analysis of it now formulation analysis is a challenging and tricky part because uh, in herbs relatively the matrix is very simple but when you have a formulation it has first complexity is it has multiple drugs into it and second uh, complication is that it may be in a ointment format so uh, already it is having one format of complexity that is the herb itself herb quantity and secondly it has a, a matrix associated to it like an ointment tube or a, a spray something like that so that again creates some kind of a problem over here so it is very important for you to know the label claim of the uh, formulation that how much content is there actually into your uh, product because that will at the end of the thing uh, when you want to do an investigation you are somewhat associated in finding out what is actually present into it and uh, how much quantity it is present so generally even when we receive any formulation from the industry and stating that we want to do a uh, uh, you know uh, estimation whether this uh, sample is present or whether that herb is present what we first do is we find out the label claim and how much that extract uh, is being actually put into that because in uh, formulations like chavan prash and all you will see that gallic acid is the content which is 60 percent of the formulation so in that case you will have the monograph which will be dominated by gallic acid and other herbs which are there will be in minuscule quantity so in that case uh, the sample preparation and standards will be an interesting part because if you want to justify something you need to show each and every uh, part of it uh, now the complexity can be simplified if you develop a quality fingerprint out of it and uh, then you just compare that fingerprint over uh, the time period and uh, you check out whether it is uh, matching with the sample now there are two things associated uh, with uh, comparing of uh, herbal preparations and the extract that is a formulation in this case as i told you it has got many herbs and i just want to see whether those herbs are present in my formulation what i do is i individually run a fingerprint of that particular herb maybe manjishta or berberine aristata and for these these are some of the very common herbs which are there and you can run a fingerprint out of it and when you uh, run this fingerprint you just take your uh, sample and check whether you have resembling bands and also interestingly look out for differentiating banks maybe uh, out of the five which are coming from the herbs uh, there may be all five of them and uh, there may be something which may be different now there are two kinds of approaches like we do this normally in this way alternatively what we look is the difference we also develop a new mobile face that is totally different and we run both the samples and see if any extra peak or extra band is appearing onto the formulation and the uh, raw material which can be exactly matched so uh, that is also an interesting part where you get an additional peak which is significantly uh, uh, matching with the formulation and uh, establish that yes it, it somewhat gives you an identity that it is present uh, we have done this in the past for one of the uh, industry samples and that is how we went to this uh, process of thinking 
So there are two, uh, these two things which are very important when we talk about standards and samples. Now, mostly in HPTLC, you don't require very high quality standards. They can be working standards. You know, curcumin standards, you get uh, as low as 2300 for a 60% purity standard. You really don't have to go in very high impur uh, purity uh, standards because you can identify things with a lower impurity if you have earlier done with a very high purity standard and now you want to repeat the experiment. Once you know that it is coming in particular RF value, you can use a lower purity, impurity, you know, associated uh, standard, which is there, which may be 60, 70% because already you have done an initial work, maybe 10 mg or 5 mg initially you collect of very high purity. And then later on, you can go for a 60% because you have established already that uh, if the pure standard is there, it is coming at this RF value. And now if I use a little bit lower purity of standard, I can get this is not the case with any other chromatographic technique because you have a lot of matrix effect which plays a role in the separation phenomena. But in HPTLC, this uh, definitely gives you a better uh, upper hand over other techniques uh, in chromatography and uh, thereby you can go a little bit lower, uh, you know, working standards which are co lesser costlier and gives you the output which is required. So uh, things like this can be adopted when you are talking about standards and samples. And interestingly, everybody after the sample preparation is there. Uh, in the first step of analytical uh, step, uh, many people ask, I have a new sample. We just want to start an experiment. How do we go? The very important aspect over here is uh, Again, what, as I told you, the aim, if you are looking it into an efficacious part and associating the analytical results with the efficacious part, it is ideal that you have some, but something, you know, aqueous or uh, uh, hydroalcoholic kind of preparation or only ethanol, because generally, if you say that you're going to administer a certain drug to a patient, you're not going to isolate an ethyl extract and give that ethyl extract uh, ethyl acetate extract to the plant or maybe in later stage this may be done but right now you know considering the toxicity of the chemicals you don't generally do that you either go for the aqueous part or you go for the hydroalcoholic part or a pure alcoholic part uh, because that is again a process in homeopathy also where you will see uh, the use of such kind of products so what you do is uh, first if you are going for the efficacious part uh, stick to these kind of preparations if you are going for the non-efficacious part and it is a routine procedure for establishing a quality control then uh, you can go for any extract uh, maybe ethyl acetate maybe uh, um, you know methanol in many cases you may be interested in the essential oil of that plant and you may extract this petroleum ether absolutely it is uh, possible because what you're doing is you are focusing on a selective angle out of the entire herb i already told you that we are working with formulations now for example i have a formulation maybe of a soap and it claims that the soap has has a percentage of essential oil or uh, uh, it has got a, a other kind of oil into it. So I will definitely not look into the other part and I'll focus on the part which I'm interested in that is the oil part and I will uh, maybe if uh, eugenol is being added into the soap or menthol is being added to in the soap I will only run the fingerprint which is associated with menthol the mobile phase will be according to that the extraction will be based on uh, you know, uh, uh, petroleum ether or uh, hexane, which will actually elute the non-polar fraction, which will contain the essential oils and that we separate and we focus on to add. Unnecessary if we complicate and we say that we also want to see the uh, uh, fingerprint of the other part and these things, it will complicate your research work. So the ideal way is to stick into a straight uh, discipline, simplify, break the research work in small parts so that it becomes easier for you to uh, do the work and carry out the work and get the results at a shorter duration. And secondly, one point which I also missed in preparation of the samples in the is the quantity of samples. Now, uh, many people uh, uh, feel that by taking one sample or two sample, I have done my work. But ideally, uh, sampling is a very important fundamental uh, question when you are doing any kind of analysis. See, 
even if you do the statistics, they will say minimum six ob observations you have to put, minimum 12 observations. So uh, degree wise, the more number of samples you do, the more accurate your results begin. And uh, thanks to my ex uh, 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 experience, my director, uh, where I was previously here, uh, there also I had been suggested to do a lot of sampling and here also we believe in doing a lot of samples because sampling actually gives you a core idea of how the uh, will, uh, the reality is, you know, with one or two samples, I cannot go into a conclusion stating that this is uh, the ideal percentage of ethanol or, uh, sorry, uh, eugenol or menthol. I need to at least have 10 to uh, 20 samples and uh, all my researchers, I would request you to go for a larger sampling size so that uh, you can always get a good output. You collect it throughout the year at different time points. If it is only available in a certain season, collect it in that season, but at different time points, at different uh, maturity levels, that will give you a much more better clear idea. And even if you see the monographs, they will always say, if you see the traditional books, uh, like, uh, you know, Bas, uh, uh, one of Kirtikar and Basu, a very famous book in uh, medicinal plant, then there is uh, uh, the other books which are there. The older literature, if you say, they have always uh, stated, even if you say uh, Egon and Stahl's book, which is of EA, they will always report or uh, plant drug analysis. They will report in that the percentage will be there. And where they are unable to establish the percentage, they will mention it as not less than or not more than. So this, this important finding only comes when you have a large sample size. Do not limit your sampling just with one or two samples. Do a good amount of samples. And you know, HPTLC supports a lot many samples in a unit time. And you can do a lot many, a single plate, if you uh, consider 20 by 10, it can support maximum 25 because you are doing an R&D kind of thing. You do not need to, you know, right now jump into the pharmacopoeial guidelines and only follow the pharmacopoeial guidelines. Of course, you can do a deviation when it is a large sampling size, but with limited deviation. It is not that I change every parameter and then come out with a A. It will definitely, uh, you have certain things which have to be mandatory, like the saturation time, uh, the development solvent uh, ratio. These all things have to be actually, you know, not altered with. What you can alter is the sample size. You can increase the number of samples screen those and for HPTS it is never a costly affair because you do either one sample or two sample the amount of solvent is the same the amount of plate size is the same so you can actually achieve more output with the same so I would always suggest you that uh, which is not possible in any other format of chromatography because they uh, do it one at a time and it takes after each run flushing out everything this is a complex procedure so uh, when I talk of a large sample size this gives you an ultimate advantage simply run many samples run it through and you know there are some interesting tools which i will show you in the software so that uh, you are not lost today if you are doing one analysis after 10 days you have done one analysis uh, you don't recollect how that uh, analysis is there or how should I, you know, I have uh, found out that this peak is coming throughout, but I need to prove it. So our software gives you that provision where you can actually align all those uh, 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 analysis at different time points done. And you just collaborate them and tell that, see, this is my, it is not a synthetic picture. It is an validated, audited uh, document that is generated through the software and using that you can always justify that I have done so many samples and I have seen this single observation from this observation I have brought out and uh, reading like this that this is the uh, sample size so it is very important for you to have a large sample size uh, in case of herbal work so really uh, this uh, is an important aspect so do not miss out that when you are doing and uh, that is the first step when we uh, say for uh, doing a good sample preparation. So these are some of the important aspects associated with the standards and sample. Then we move on to the sample preparation. Now sample preparation is an another important aspect. Uh, people say, uh, you know, I have prepared a solution. How, what is the right quantity? Now USP has a specific guidelines. It will always tell you to prepare 100 mg per uh, one ml methanol. But uh, there may be a cases that it may be, see, when you are preparing a solution of 100 mg, technically you are preparing a 100% sample and something between 0.1%, 0.01%, uh, till if it is fluorescent, it may give you 0.001% reading of presence of any material will be also detected. So that is why 100 mg of the sample is kind of a standard. But if you are having an extract that is uh, isolate of it, 
then you can go for something around uh, you know uh, 10 mg because these are concentrated you have uh, already concentrated the fraction you are considering an, a purer form of the uh, matrix and that is why you need to take lesser amount which is equivalent to 100 mg of a uh, uh, strangle now when you are adding into your herbal formulations uh, generally you see uh, there is a common uh, practice I am not sure whether you have heard about it but generally if you see the API industry sometimes if a batch faces I, I will not say uh, it is generally done but it is one of the approaches which uh, is prevailing and what will they do is a batch is failing they will uh, top up with the uh, uh, the amount, suppose the yield is around 70% and uh, they need to have a 100% batch. So from the next batch, uh, they will mix into this, uh, uh, the purer form and make the yield 100% past that batch. So what they're doing is they are uh, doing, but alternatively, what you can do is you can, uh, in, in HPTS, you can find out that uh, extract presence in the sample and thereby dictate that, uh, okay, uh, this is a 70% pure standard. So the instead of the dose of uh, 1 mg, you have to give at least 1.2 mg for getting the activity. You know, this is an important aspect when we talk about the content and the efficacious part. If I'm getting a good efficacious part in 400 mg tablet of, uh, say, Vidanya, and that has a percentage of Vidanolite, say, uh, 2 to 3 percent, I'm just giving an example. These are not accurate figures. But uh, if it is giving an efficacious value at 2.5 percent, and later on I have a batch, the raw material which is coming, which is around 1 percent or 2 percent, what I can do is I can state over there that the dose described uh, by the standard physician has to be updated by 1.2 percent because this is there. This is a good way of uh, doing things. This is what we can do to counteract because you know when there are tons of material coming in into a factory, it is literally impossible to. Uh, screen those samples get the purest form there is bound to be adulteration uh, and uh, the adulteration percentage can be found out quickly and once the percentage is determined then simply what you do is you top up or you increase the medication value you can put a standard instruction on the label this is just a uh, thought process but uh, this is how uh, that approach can be there and uh, you know with HPTLC immediately you can find out whether the dose is proper or not and uh, the content is proper or not and uh, you can stick to a higher uh, dose level which will give you the same efficacious value as the 2.5% uh, bethanolide in uh, 400 mg tablet will give you. So this kind of things are very important and uh, when we talk about uh, HPTLC format. Now, uh, moving further, we can do is uh, standardize the conditions. Uh, always uh, my special appeal to the researchers that when you do HPTLC. So we were talking about sample preparation and not. So here I have two kinds of sample. If you see on my hand, uh, one is slightly lighter and the other one is dark. So uh, when we are preparing the sample, if you have prepared several samples, you will get an estimation of which samples are very dark, which samples are very light. Although this observation is very minute or not that important, but for HPTLC, it is, uh, you know, you can establish the amount of concentration, uh, how much you should apply. Normally, a very, uh, a very dark solution will indicate that there is a lot of matrix inside. So uh, you can first go for a lower volumes of application or dilute the sample and apply and uh, see the response and then you can decide whether you should uh, concentrate or uh, don't dilute the initial sample apply lower application volumes instead of diluting it because if there are some components which are in faint quantity they will disappear if you dilute so always as a thumb rule process you go for the variable injection procedure which is there in HPTLC apply a lower volumes uh, say one microliter or 0.5 microliters and test how is the chromatogram coming and based on that you can decide whether you need to dilute a particular sample and then apply. So this is an interesting strategy which we have adopted for uh, many of the HPTSC work and uh, we go ahead for the analysis. Now the second part uh, we have got few questions uh, uh, in past also that we are getting a lot of, you know, curvature when we are developing, what can be an answer to that? So interestingly, uh, we have found out that uh, somewhere the saturation actually plays the role when we are getting a crescent form of separation. And this is a many of the most common problem which is faced many a times across all uh, people. So what we strategize is have a larger dimension of filter paper. This is my chamber of uh, 
20 by uh, you know 20 by 10, uh, 10 so 20 is my x axis 10 is my y axis of course this chamber is slightly bigger to accommodate a 20 by 10 so it will be not the accurate uh, dimension but representatively uh, representation wise we always say it is a 20 by 10 chamber which i am using so what i do is interestingly i place this filter paper and you will see it is bigger than the normal size you can see the edges it is slightly bigger and what we do is we tilt the side edges when we place it we place it in this way and uh, tilt the size edges over here so what we get is a uh, 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 you know curvature across throughout and the diffusion will be more controlled the saturation will be better and this should minimize your uh, you know uh, crescent formation which is coming in the chromatogram mind you other side is empty because i am going to place the plate on the other side if you see this chamber the other side which is there this side is actually you can see my hand that is because i am going to place the plate over here on this side and uh, the other side i have uh, put the filter paper and as i uh, you know fold it and place it properly you can see slight uh, gap will be there from where you can monitor the plate at the same time it will give you more saturation and uh, prevent that crescent formation that is coming so this is one of the strategies which we adopt for herbal analysis in hptse and the other part is uh, the plate you know uh, once you have finished with your r d work i would definitely when you are going for the validation uh, we sincerely suggest to go for the glass plate it gives you you know there are certain manual errors i have uh, seen um, questions which come in sir i have scanned the plate but i am not getting that area or i am missing the area no there are two aspects associated to it one is the hardware failure which definitely is a part of a service and they will do the needful the other part is the application part whether the molecule uh, on the plate is uh, properly developed and uh, you can scan at 200 many a times uh, you don't see the molecule at uh, uh, 254 but at 200 if you scan you are bound to get many of the compounds which are hidden because at low uv this become very uh, visible uh, so we have a practical experience when we are doing an oil analysis that uh, certain uh, bands were not visible at uh, normal wavelengths but when we analyze it through uh, at a wavelength of 200 what we get is uh, we uh, get to see some unknown bands which are there and that uh, creates the you know uh, difference we can find out many hidden uh, answers to it so when i talk about the hptlc plates these are aluminium back plates uh, these are good uh, if you have a skilled person who's cutting the plates that is very good then you go ahead with the validation with uh, these aluminium plates but if you don't have a skilled uh, you know person and students are cutting anything i would request you to uh, do the final validation with the glass plate if possible or uh, uh, either you can take this necessary precaution you see there is a uh, x position and the y position so if this is not properly cut, I have a slightly, you know, deviation in the dimension of the plate. When I mount it onto the scanner, there are chances that there might be deviation in the signal, which I'm getting as a response. And that is why that can give you. So in herbal analysis, uh, this is very important that you uh, take such kinds of precaution. Now, after finishing uh, the topic, uh, of course, we'll not go through all of this. I'll just move further and i have told you many of the things uh, associated to this okay uh, stationary phase is an important aspect when you are uh, taking the stationary phase uh, you know uh, that day somebody wanted to do a manual uh, exposure of the plate to the humidity control it has to be done minimum 45 minutes when you do this uh, after application you want to standardize the humidity control keep the plate in uh, uh, the magnesium chl chloride hexahydrate uh, solution uh, in the desiccator and in the desiccator you put the plate uh, expose the plate for around 45 minutes which if you do with the adc the time is much more less and if you do with the hptlc pro it is even much more faster in the hptlc pro the entire uh, conditioning is done within three to five minutes that fast it is in the uh, adc2 it is around uh, 20 and uh, it is autonomous you know it it is a separate device and uh, the whole thing becomes auditable and everything it becomes once you go into the instrumentation part once you're doing the manually part this thing you can do but minimum 45 minutes you are supposed to keep the plate and then go for the development this will condition the plate and you will get very good uh, reproducible results each and every time when you do herbal analysis now uh, coming back to the 
um, you know, uh, stationary phase, uh, silica gel, aluminum oxide, amino phases, do check that what class of compound are you targeting and based on that, the stationary phase is very important. Now, mostly as a, you know, a pro, uh, we always talk about uh, HPTLC and you must have seen we normally work with the silica. Uh, the most uh, important reason for working with the silica is that it is 99% suitable for many different types of analysis and uh, also it uh, gives you a lot of output, uh, reduces the cost of analysis and things like that, you know, at uh, research level and all, you are always, uh, you know, having a cost free budget. So there you may be restricted to the amount which you have and uh, with that you have to procure equipments and things like that. So uh, aluminium always has become a very uh, cheaper option with the silica plate which is there and 99% of the job is done. You refer to uh, plant drug analysis uh, uh, by uh, Wagner's book, you have J.B. Harbon book on phytochemicals. These are very absolute fabulous books and you get a lot of uh, insights into different kinds of herbal work. And uh, based on that, you will see that uh, 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 the normal silica plate is uh, being used much largely. So you can take uh, input from that and uh, uh, decide further. Now, derivatization is an important aspect. When we talk about here, I would like to highlight uh, the th three things when we have to consider when we are working with a herbal analysis is the RF color and intensity. These three things are really very important. And normally if when we are also working, we generate the report with these three important parameters, that is the RF of the band, the color of the band, the intensity of the band. Uh, of course, if you are using a scanner, the intensity is justified by the scanner itself, which gives you a chromatogram. But in case you're not, then you can use these three parameters, which are very important in case of HPTLC of herbal work and uh, get uh, observations out of it. Uh, note this because this will be actually very crucial if you want to develop a certain marker that is of, uh, you know, the recent guidelines, which has come from the IPC. This is pertaining to the format where you want to launch the herbal phytochemical as a synthetic drug or equivalent to a drug at that time you need to test it as per uh, the guidelines which is suggested by ipc with four marker approach to make it much more you know appealing and make, make it much more in rationally because in science you need to have a reason behind everything and uh, when you are projecting it as a uh, drug you need to have the uh, gist of it, like uh, this approach uh, with the very specific values. But if you are uh, uh, checking with normal traditional you are screening many samples for QC on daily basis, you can use this strategy or RF color intensities to monitor the samples and get understanding out of it. Uh, this reduces the workload by a lot percentage because uh, you need to screen many samples at a unit time and this becomes very easy. It is also documented by our imaging device and uh, with that you can get a lot of output. And uh, then uh, this is the feature. I will actually show this on the software, how we use it, uh, comparison of the track related information. We pay special attention to the related information, especially after derivatization. We have seen a lot many molecules to be appearing after derivatization. And uh, these become some uh, uh, after the chemical process of uh, derivatization. Like if you are interested in triterpenoids, we normally derivatize it with anisaldehyde sulfuric acid. So it can give you a lot of detail. If you are using, you know, uh, your flavonoids are there, you can simply have a methanolic sulfuric acid and see the fluorescent compounds or flavonoids. If you want to simply screen it, you will see that by default, they have a lot of fluorescence. Now, uh, I missed one point when I'm talking about flavonoids is sample preparation. You need to be ensuring that uh, they are properly taken care of. Flavonoids are light sensitive. Uh, you know, uh, if you want to extract alkaloids, it has to be basified. Then the alkaloid extraction is more. These small, small things which are important are very important. And that is why I told you, here comes the role of literature where we search in the literature and see what is a good way of extracting content uh, from it and uh, analyzing it on the HPTLC. So we go for if there is any specific uh, type of extraction which is required for a particular aspect when you're going for a, a commercial development of a molecule a drug finding, these things has to be done because uh, the extraction efficiency, you need to have more. For example, I want to I, I'll, I'll 
isolate berberine from berberine aristata. So I cannot work with the normal extraction between because it will be giving me a lesser content. What I need to do is you go for a specialized extraction which will like uh, uh, use uh, ammonia for getting more amount of uh, uh, alkaloid extracted. And from that you get a good extraction and uh, that is how you can pinpoint. So uh, coming back to again, the data which is being generated, we understand the data, how the drug is being, uh, how the monograph is formed in different light conditions. You know, the more number of data points gives you much assurity that the data what you are seeing is of higher value. This I've been always talking in my uh, presentations, but uh, actually when we uh, derivatize a molecule with many derivatizing reagents and uh, as well observe it uh, before development, we get a lot of understanding. Like for example, we if we are going for, uh, you know, uh, fatty acids, you know, they may naturally not be uh, UV sensitive or in certain cases they may have some slight fluorescence but when you actually derivatize it with phosphomolybdic acid you are much more clearer that yes is it is a type of uh, fatty acid oil which is there in case of essential oils you see that uh, anisaldehyde sulfuric acid vanillin sulfuric acid are very much used to see the fingerprint and to understand so a, a derivatization gives you a lot of understanding and uh, an important aspect now, uh, these are some of the things which are there into the software. After going through understanding many of the aspects uh, associated with herbal analysis, I will now show you these uh, important features and how we utilize it on different live analysis. Uh, and then uh, we'll uh, finally, after we finish off with the uh, understanding with practical examples, we'll open this session for question answer. So let me start with the, um, actually showing you some files. So this is the first uh, file, you know, uh, here Equistim uh, palastris. It's a foreign plant and it is uh, one of the oldest fern. Fern, I'm, I, it's a particular type of plant uh, which is having, uh, you know, uh, which is from the older, I think so it comes under bryophytes. And uh, these plants are actually primitive in nature and they are, are, are on the verge of extinction, but this plant is very much present still on the earth. And that is why they have been studying this. And uh, what they have is they have done, uh, checked with different, uh, three different standards, which are generally common. When selecting markers also, if you are uh, going for a quality control, uh, you know, <clears throat> going for a common standard will slightly benefit you. But if they, the adulterant is also having a similar kind of standard, uh, you know, which is there, then uh, these standards will not be beneficial. Of course, if these standards are only present in here, like for example, we go for T estimations, we may either go for caffeine or recently we have uploaded one file where caffeic acid, gallic acid and caffeine. So I'm giving much more uh, um, angle to it. I'm going much more focused on it because I'm applying much more samples, much more standards and uh, getting an output from it. So in that way, you have to keep in mind so this is the first example. Let me show you first the image. This is the image before, you know, uh, this is the image of the clean plate. Normally in HPTLC, we have this process of clean plate where you should ideally take an image of the clean plate. How to take an image of the clean plate? You go into HPTLC steps. You simply add an imaging step before the entire analysis work. If you have a visualizer, you don't have to worry. This feature will be there with you. You simply click and take uh, the image of the clean plate. And for that, what you have to do is add a step of taking image over here. Finish the step. By default, your first step will be after defining the stationary phase parameters over here and uh, the uh, sample over here where you mention the vial ID and the uh, 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 you know, a plant sample. Now here also, I would like to highlight that while ID is an important aspect of HPTLC. And if you want to do the quantitative estimation after doing the analysis, every and each time use a different while ID subjected to different samples. I'm talking with respect to the samples. If you have the same, for example, caffeine, I'm using 0.5% uh, 0.5 mg per ml for most of my uh, analysis then I may consider that is around, I think so 50 PPM. Uh, I will be considering that same while ID, I can use it for many different analysis. But if I'm using caffeine of one mg per ml instead of 0.5, that's a different concentration. So a different while ID has to be used. And also if it is associated to a different analysis, use a different while ID. Don't ever 
mix the while ID is because this while ID gets locked to the original content which you have stated into the software. And now as the software is under audit log system, it will not allow you to remove this and again add it. If you are using a vision cats, it will definitely not allow you to change that and it gets locked because of the auditable aspect which is associated. So always use a while ID. Very easy way to do is we use the uh, financial year and the project number which is uh, associated to you something that you can incorporate uh, so that you can generate many while IDs uh, associated to it and you can do your analysis in uh, herbal work. So while ID is an important part and associated to that you can see all the samples, the SST, everything has been applied and uh, when uh, the clean image, uh, clean plate image is by default taken, then you have the application done. Now here only you have a provision of doing an SST. We have recently launched a, a universal SST. Please do read to, through that paper of universal SST. I'll show you a few examples which were in the earlier stages of SST which we had done, but we used SST on those plates. It gives you a lot of confidence of whether the procedure is going right. As a analyst, as a, a person who is managing an analysis, uh, the SST becomes a tool for you to understand that the lower processes which have been done are properly uh, done and there is no problem over there because uh, everything is with auditability. You know, uh, when you co consider anything, the data of being very high quality, the data uh, determines to be a very high quality. It is because it is totally transparent. Everything is being properly documented and you find nothing which is uh, not present over there. So if you are uh, uh, concerned about good auditable results, always go for SST uh, and run. Uh, many people say that Are, we have 21 CFR audit log. We, if we go wrong, we'll be, uh, uh, you know, uh, it, it is not advisable. See. Uh, the misconception about audit log system is that if you make an error, you have to mention what the error has to be is there. It has to be clearly defined. There is no rule which states that error can be totally eliminated. Error will be bound to happen. But if you properly justify what was that error, for example, I have uh, not cut the plate properly or my mobile face was not right and I mention over here, nobody will uh, tell anything because you have properly justified that, that yes, this experiment went wrong because of this aspect. So in that case, it becomes very much transparent and you don't have to worry about other things that, okay, I cannot use the system. Now what will happen and things like that. This yeah, has to be, you know, clarified. And uh, I hope you agree with this uh, on this particular aspect. Coming back to the point is SST. Now SST is uh, here, they have used a routine and hyper hyperocyte. It is also present in the sample. So uh, it has been taken up for the sample. One important question which comes uh, to us also is that what SST should I take? Now, whether it should be related to the plant or unrelated, you know, the concept of uh, SST is to just justify that the uh, chromatography is done properly. Everything is in proper shape. There is no deviation in the mobile phase or the plate. If any of the slightest deviation in the SST happens, it will tell you that something it is going wrong, whether the plate is uh, having a stationary phase is having a problem or the mobile phase has developed a problem and it can be immediately troubleshooted. So uh, SST, uh, it does not define you that whether it should be related to the plant or whether it should be unrelated to the plant. It is a uh, concept which is devised to take care that whether the chromatography is perfect or not. So you are free to choose a SST standard. Now recently the concept of uh, universal SST have uh, come up and you can easily uh, get that copy on online at CAMAX website and you can have that a mixture, it will cover entire polar range uh, right from non-polar to polar mobile phases and you simply need to run that mixture, prepare your own mixture, run it and see which two molecules are coming and then uh, based on those two molecules, you can every time have run that SST or have eight different wires and run eight different tracks, see which two are coming and every time use those two markers as your SST. So you don't have to repeatedly go and search for which marker I should go for SST, where I will find the data. All these complexities are gone. There is a universal SST which is there. Simply you take that paper, bring those standards. These standards are also very cheap. They are not very costly. You will uh, find these market not maximum 
more than uh, 1500 2000 rupees for a gram which is quite cheap as a marker and you can use it for a longer time purchase you can have uh, that and you can run an ssd on all your plates very easily done not much of a thing which is there just you need to simply put this ssd so uh, you click over there and rest all things it is uh, doing it how to establish an ssd you do uh, three times the same plate with the ssd uh, mark and then you establish that rf value this rf value has to be put over here in the ssd uh, division over here and uh, you should give a delta rf value which is by default 0 0.02 automatically it will analyze and tell you whether your uh, fourth plate or in future when you do the same point of analysis whether it is passing or failing based on the ssd criteria so it's that simple not very difficult and easily achievable you can also define the wavelength in which you are monitoring here they have used 366 why that will also i will tell you and uh, derivative uh, derivative staged that you can use so uh, then we come back again to the analysis file and uh, here what you see is uh, we have devised this analysis file now many people ask i have two or three processes of derivatization to be done uh, after the surely with hptlc this is the main advantage you can have a non destructive and destructive derivatization coupled in we have uh, typically and uh, uh, iodination which is a non-destructive method and again then you uh, dry the plate by using heating and use the same plate for a destructive uh, derivatization like asr or phosphomolybdic acid or anything which is pertaining to your research and findings which are associated according to that and you can simply add these steps so first derivatization second derivatization and everything is documented over here in steps you see uh, this is the clean plate then you have the first development after development how the plate was looking and after derivatization with np reagent you see that these markers which were earlier not seen over here you can see in 254 it is showing but in 366 it gives you significant uh you know um, color now here if you ask me are i am getting already in 255 why i should go for a derivatization the answer is color specificness now the more color specific you are getting the more accurate you are getting here you can be fooled that it can be a some co eluting peak which may be coming into the sample but uh, if you don't have a scanner and you want to verify that a derivatization gives you that tool because after derivatization the molecule will de develop a certain color which will be maybe correlating or it can justify that whether it is not present or present so it becomes a hundred percent proof uh, that whether the molecule is same which is present in the sample or it is not same so here you see the example now we have some tools interestingly i have a spot application you see the same plate i can increase or decrease this is an interesting tool and whenever i'm investigating into any herbal product uh, after I have got generated the data, the image specially, I use this tool to find out, you know, it has a selective approach. If I'm only selecting here, it will accordingly amplify the selective uh, material and minimize other things. So interestingly, this can be used to understand how the separation has been done. And we analyze every plate uh, to thoroughly get an understanding of how the separation has happened and uh, how to verify whether what we are seeing is perfect or not then we have an interesting tool of even generating chromatograms from the software itself so i can simply click over here and generate a chromatogram and then i can but only at three wavelengths it will give you only at three wavelengths and from that uh, here we have used a height as it is a fluorescent molecule in 354 this is an example of limit test now uh, our tool not only provides you to do a linearity in other uh, uh, aspects you need to fetch the data from here if you want to analyze it in a different uh, uh, place also that is also possible you just go into the integration in the integration you see on the top it has an uh, option of export the peak data as csv csv will transform into an excel sheet all the data will be uh, given into the excel sheet and you can plot that into an excel sheet and get your uh, calculations done otherwise to simplify things the software itself has this calibration function and here if you see uh, this uh, limit test function has been enabled so not only do we analyze at a particular angle of doing linearity and find, finding out unknown concentrations where i'm interested in suppose i have uh, uh, this happens in many of the garment factories where 
morphine content is being analyzed from uh, your opium uh, plant. So what would they do is uh, they have a certain payment criteria. If the secondary compound is more than this, I will pay you this much. If it is less, it will be a different rate. So how do they do that? In that case, I, I do not need to be very specific that what is my value inside the plant. Uh, what I need to do is check is whether it is falling above or below. So simply I can run this uh, limit test over here. The option is seen over here on the right hand side where you see the limit test, reproducibility, internal standard, related substances all these things can be done when i talk about limit test this is a direct calculation where you can use a standard and uh, uh, you know you run the lean uh, uh, integrated after that you integrate the peak which you are interested in we uh, look at multiple angles so you see at uh, by simply pressing alt and rotating with my mouse i can see a 3d view understand and integrate so if i want to integrate i just click on any track and integrate from here which is there and then go in substance assignment, tell the system that this is my interest uh, uh, molecule of my interest. The rest all is done automatically. You will see that by area it has been calculating and then you get the linearity uh, limit test function done. So other samples are failing, right? Because we have set a criteria. You can set different criteria like whether above or below and directly from the instrument itself, you can get a uh, calculation done. So it becomes 100% auditable. Secondly, you have a reproducible function. If you are doing a validation step uh, in which reproducibility is required, or you want to see whether the sample is giving the same uh, result, you can run a reproducibility test. And uh, instead of if I check mark over here, you get an additional spot, simply click over there, the rest all procedure remains the same and you get a reproducibility test done. Internal standard when you have spiked anything uh, inside and you want to quantitate it against. Normally this happens that uh, in herbal, what happens is I know these three molecules. That is, uh, I know where rutin is, I know where is uh, hyperocyte and other things, but uh, there are certain other compounds which are also present. So I can use a concept known as uh, related substance in this. So I can take this as my standard and I can plot a linearity and against that I can see how much is this quantitating or to what extent is this response coming? And I can establish a related approach. So if my main substance or my hyperoside is uh, this much of content, my uh, secondary component, which is there, that is in ratio 3%. This is an, another dimension, how we study the output which is being generated. And thereby also you can understand the quality of the results. You know, the biggest advantage over here is you can do multiple components at a time. So I can select this main substance and related substance. I can have many of them, not only just this one, I can do three, four. And then against that, I will see what is the ratio which is coming and I can establish that. Okay. Uh, this is my, so that is also possible with just one click. You have to click the related substance. And the moment you click over here, you get an option, like whether it is a main component. And once you select a main substance, uh, this will be your uh, molecule based on which linearity will be done. And I can add another substance, which will be maybe something blue. And that will come as a related substance you can see over here. So I have highlighted this as a main substance. And then I will automatically over here get the option as uh, related substance. And uh, like that, I can uh, find out many different findings. So these are some interesting features which are present and how we analyze the data. It is very simple. We, once you scan the data, you get a lot of output from it and uh, understand. In case of uh, comparison, I was talking about that we generally, uh, you know, compare the results which are happened in past. Let me show you a example copy of that. I'll just type in over here as comparison viewer. This is also present in all our files. Uh, so you have this category. Searching is very simple in our HPTLC. You have many different uh, ways to search. If you tag files with different colors, you can search based on that. Uh, you tag it only comparison viewer and it will show you all the comparison viewer and things like that. So interestingly, it is very simple. So now I will just uh, uh, show you one of the examples of a comparison viewer. Uh, There's an advanced function where I can mention over here. And uh, search over here, um, different things which are there in my analysis. Very simple. 
just type in things over here. I sorry. Yeah. And search. So automatically it will tell you, see these many are comparison viewer files. So when we were doing the studies of SST, we found out, uh, you know, we used to call, uh, collate all the analysis results that are uh, that were there. I'll just double click. Um, and uh, we used to study how the profile is being generated uh, over different mobile phases. So this is based on a single molecule. Um, because our database is very heavily loaded, it generally takes a few fraction of seconds to load the data, but you can see the same substance that is being analyzed in different mobile phase, how it has behaved. And it is, everything is traceable. If you click on a certain chromatogram, it will show you uh, the image when this analysis was done and uh, from where this data has been procured in. Similarly, it will also give you uh, chromatogram profiling. We, would, we use this for many other samples where you can see, you can use the stack view and then see how the separation profile has come. And uh, based on that, so this is just an example copy. You can see how, and then I can select uh, this as my reference and place it over here. So it will become my reference. And against that, I can use the flip mode and uh, understand many things, or I can uh, change from here. You can see, uh, let me show you this. And uh, these are some of the, uh, you know, files that have been done. Uh, I, I'm just showing you live. These are not actually very, uh, normally uh, people will only show you a good files, but we have all mixed category, what we have done in initial way research and things like that. So here you can see, this is another file uh, where you can uh, find out many things. Uh, you can display peaks and compare where it is coming. You see, this is an example of it. Uh, if I go to this, you know, and then there is a background increment. Many people have also seen that when we are doing this, you know, there are some interesting tool in integration. I would also like to show you that. So this is one of the aspect. And then finally, we see one more aspect when we are dealing with uh, herbal analysis and uh, interpreting the results is uh, this part. Uh, let me go back to the original file and uh, uh, go into the results. Uh, yeah. I was talking about an interpretation, uh, integration. You see on the right hand side, you have an easy mode, you have a manual mode and you have the expert mode. Normally when we get a data, we uh, use, if you simply want to integrate and see what has come, you use the easy mode. But if you want some uh, uh, manual things like manual peak integration to be done, you can switch over to manual. Of course, this will reflect in the report. It will, it is not that it will not reflect in the report and also you have another profile, which is in the expert in expert. You have this window, which is very much interesting. We, what we do is suppose we are getting a signal from track one and uh, what we can do is I can assign over here that I want to subtract and minus that wavelength. So I can select either track or I can use another wavelength whereby which you can actually, you know, uh, this is my track second. So I will use track second. And the moment I set it at uh, track two, you will see that in my track two, there is no signal, but that is being subtracted from all my other responses and uh, I'm getting the data. So it's an interesting feature, which helps us in uh, understanding many things. How much is the difference from the original uh, uh, concept and uh, original content? And this is an interesting feature. You can, you have a lot, many things uh, interactive by default, the, uh, uh, you know, mm, uh, the baseline is quite heighted. Now here the uh, baseline is if I remove this profile subtraction, you can see slight increase in the baseline. But if I use this, uh, the baseline is directly normalized. So uh, it does these things automatically in easier mode. But if you want to really explore into things and investigate, you can use these things and identify. Normally we do use these tools sometimes when we require them. Otherwise, uh, the easy mode is best for all of us. So uh, then uh, with this, uh, we have almost uh, covered all the concepts. I'll quickly show you some of the different angles. This was a phenol analysis, which we are interested in phenols. So after derivatizing it with, uh, you know, uh, uh, FECL3, we see for the uh, bands over here. Uh, and uh, sorry, I think so. This is alcoholic QOH, either of the two I'm just 
uh, misplacing. But we observe this record for any blue color bands and uh, understand normally this plate will look like this. But as I told you, we have this function of uh, interestingly amplifying things. We utilize this to understand. Then one example of uh, flavonoids where uh, flavonoids are easily established and uh, we see after you know uh, before derotization it looks like this after derotization these are some trial and uh, r and d plates which i'm showing you these are not the best uh, we have a concept of volume optimization which we do when we are doing of herbal analysis so we see the response and based on that we'll decide whether the volume is high or low we decrease it sometimes if minor components are only seen at higher concentrations we have to apply the higher concentration and the uh, lower concentration to simultaneously monitor it so that is one strategy which we follow and uh, um, another example here is an example of the sst in the practical file so this is in the oils i was telling you we have been doing uh, this was just an sst which has been attached and uh, you know iodination we have done after development it does not show anything but interestingly we have scanned the plate at uh, 200 nanometers where we get a lot of insight so uh, then this is a tea sample you know in herbal we are seeing any uh, you know uh, uh, color is being added or not so here again sst example is there then you have uh, beta cetestrol um, analysis done again this is with sst now here you can see uh, the important aspect is the separation quality and uh, confirming it with derivatization Normally here, if you see in 254, you will feel that this is present. But once I derivatize it, I am clearly sure that this is a different substance and this is a different substance. So derivatization gives a very much confidence to us that what we are reporting is of the right time. And ultimately, of course, we have the TLC MS also, which we use uh, when required and uh, when we are uh, looking for unknown compounds or double verification, final verification, we, you can incorporate those also. What we do is we will derivatize half of this plate and uh, the underivatized will subject it to the uh, TLC MS investigation. We'll mark over here with the help of, uh, normally we do it with a pencil. I would just like to show you like this, we'll mark uh, either the RF or we'll prepare some brackets over here, four dots at the side uh, two dots and on the top two dots and then align my uh, same value over here and see where it is and then i'll pick up the spot from the same to find out whether it is present in the sample normally hptlc ms is uh, a later on stage and uh, once we have a good chromatography we can switch over to doing that and also don't uh, many of us feel that okay i'm getting 10 spots i should run all the 10 for tlc ms it is no first of all thing the intensity is important uh, the compound which you are in search uh, that is also important. Suppose it is not a mixture. Uh, it is not a single compound. It is a mixture. So we generally do a 2D chromatography before conferring and going for the TLC MS uh, that is there to uh, understand whether it is a single compound or multiple compound. Uh, then more examples are there. I'll just uh, browse uh, through. Uh, this is one example which we just now saw. Then the next one, um, this is about, uh, you know, um, yeah. Uh, here, if you see, this is an uh, scopolatine from one of the plant samples which we have identified. And scopolatine has this fluorescent. You see, you see the detection level. Uh, initially, the standards is very feeble. We have normally this plate looks like this, but when we use the spot amplification, we can go really into details and understand how the plate is beha behaving. So this is one of the strategies which we use, and this is about scopolatine. Now here, our intention is to identify scopolatine. Uh, the question was that uh, uh, whether this separation is uh, good. The separation justifies the presence of this, but if you see over here, there is a mixing of the spot with the flavonoid content. So alternatively, what I can do is I can strategically uh, use chloroform to remove the uh, 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 chlorophyll part, and then I can run the same plate or use some selective extraction technology like ethyl acetate or simply some other uh, uh, you know ideas like uh, simply freezing it uh, many of the oil medicated oils we use uh, normally we freeze it and then we get it extracted and do the analysis it becomes very simple rapid and uh, and easy when i'm doing a validation my concern is to see whether i'm getting peaks from my mobile phase if, if i switch on the label you can see 
this is the solvent in which uh, we have used for diluent and things like that and then the aerial part root and mobile phase so these three confirm that i'm not getting any interference so based on my approach my interpretation of data is also changing this is about repeatability repeatability and you see we have opened you should we use multiple tabs to document five tabs you can open uh, and uh, see the reproductive facility this is the calibration directly in the results it will come and it will give you the cv percentage so these all things are done automatically through the software we really don't have to do much about it and that is how we go for understanding linearity wise we see the concentration how the response starts and uh, if the sample or standard is in proper range then we go ahead with the linearity otherwise uh, that we can establish from the quantitative part once we scan the plate we get to know about the intensity of different standards this is about one of the standards and if i show you there are multiple standards in this and so if i select any uh, of them and calibrate you can see the such kind of a calibration of multiple is there now uh, uh, here we can uh, we have optimized the method with glass plate this is about the aluminium trial plates which we had done so here you can see multiple samples are simultaneously being uh, quantified and uh, integrated so as i told you it's a uh, it's a mix and match of many things i have given you some practical aspects i have uh, explained you some uh, uh, hptlc use uh, for different types of analysis and understanding the outcome of it uh, getting to know whether a good quality separation is done that is chiefly done through the instrumentation part and things like that so uh, this uh, uh, is a capsulated format of what we do and some of the practical aspect associated with uh, herbal analysis. Uh, I'm sorry, we have exceeded our time. We'll quickly uh, take a few questions if there are any, or you can drop off your questions at lab at the rate ancrum.in. I think so, there are a few questions. So let us uh, start answering them quickly. Thank you for your patience listening and hope this was a very intuitive work. Yeah. So first question I see over here is by uh, one of the persons who has mentioned what about standardize the multi drug with more than 10 drugs. Now, as I told you, 10 drugs is a very complex mixture. And if you are interested in seeing each drug, uh, the simplistic approach, what we do is we run each hub's uh, uh, reported methods along with a um, sample and we just try to correlate with it and then uh, understand what uh, to what extent it is uh, matching and based on that our reporting is done if any selective derivatizing reagent is there for a particular aspect like alkaloids and things like that we use that otherwise uh, definitely the 10 drug combination is very uh, challenging and here also the important aspect is the label claim how much uh, are you adding into that that is also very important then uh, let's move on so these things will be an important aspect. Um, then uh, we have another question from Mr. Shivim. Uh, so if IP, uh, as IP have right, especially in terms of ASO related to standards and uh, phytochemicals chemicals of analysis of formulation, um, I'm uh, not sure about your answer to this question. Uh, I will we'll record this question and maybe we'll have some discussion and I'll revert back to you on this question. Uh, kindly explain types of plates like uh, normal phase, reverse phase, and applications accordingly. So, uh, generally, you know uh, about the difference between normal phase and uh, reverse phase. Normal phase, uh, where the stationary phase is uh, uh, polar and uh, mobile phase is non polar. So, when non polar compounds are there, you can do a little bit polar compounds with uh, mobile phases like N butanol, acetic acid, water. And to a certain extent, you get some analysis of there. But your when your molecules are totally, uh, you know, nonpolar, like it may be a saponin or uh, 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 non, uh, sorry, it may be a polar compound. So in that case, you may switch over to reverse phase. Reverse phase, there are again uh, qualities of plates which are there stationary phase. As I told you, uh, this is the TLC grade. We have two, uh, one more grade above this, which is known as the HPTLC grade. There are PLC grades known as the preparative layer plates. And uh, um, uh, these uh, three most are the most popular. There may be other also. You can check out Merck's website. And uh, on this, the backing material is silica. You have aluminum coated plates. You have cellulose coated plates. Uh, last time I showed you a glance in my method development where I have talked about, uh, shown you different uh, 
you know, uh, plates are there for different kinds of uh, investigations selectively if required. If you have a general kind of a requirement, don't go for these selective plates. You can simply work with silica plates. If you have a specialized kind of requirement, only then go for it. Uh, as a regular analyst and regular work, we have these uh, in large numbers and we normally do in this uh, HPTSC silica because our work is almost uh, answered in that. So. Uh, this is my uh, short answer to your question. There is a dedicated chapter of Dr. P.D. Sethi uh, uh, on this, uh, yay, and you will find it on many other books like Egon Stahl book of TLC, and you can read more about it. Uh, so we'll now quickly go to the next question. Uh, sir, can you show some images for terpenoids? Uh, see, terpenoids are after dermatization, uh, they turn into uh, purplish uh, with anisoleate sulfuric acid, they will turn into uh, violet uh, colors and purplish colors. Those are generally terpenoids which are there. Amirins, uh, uh, then you have uh, a few more. Uh, there is a selective paper also which is there of terpenoids. I will be sending to you. You can read on that more. And uh, that is how the terpenoids actually look. Uh, there's an interesting paper of CAMAG itself on terpenoid analysis I'll share with you. Hopefully that should give you more insight about it. And then can we get a recording of the session? I'm sure uh, with mutual consent, this can be done. If we have unknown markers, how can we evaluate via scanning? I told you that we scan at 200. We find out uh, what are hidden into it. And then we can, uh, the important aspects are three different wavelengths. Normally, we only specify two, that is 254 and 366. But 200 or 190 nanometers in an, is an interesting wavelength because many molecules are very uh, low UV sensitive. And that is why uh, these require some higher energy. So at very low UV, if we scan them, we found out their presence. And then you can take a spectra, find out the pattern. Uh, after that, you can do derivatization, which will further add on to your readings. And uh, by combining, then you can go for the TLCMS. So you have a lot of things which you can do. And finally, you can uh, understand what that marker is. You can isolate it in a vial with a TLCMS extractor or perform an isolation and then go for characterization like NMR and establish what that unknown marker is. Uh, my only uh, concern over here is that uh, we we uh, have seen from our practical experience that uh, prominent markers are much better to go for because they don't generally vary that much. But if you go for feeble markers, they will be showing you differences. Uh, next, what should be an appropriate procedure for scanning? For scanning, what you require is proper loading of the plate. Uh, again, I told you the three wavelengths. Select the lamps accordingly, uh, whether absorbance mode or fluorescence mode and then do the scanning of that. Definitely, you should get a good quality scan. Uh, the speeds by default are mentioned in that. The two important factors are the slit size, uh, then uh, three important factor actually, slit size, the scanning speed, and uh, uh, there is one more settings. I am not uh, recollecting, just, uh, just one minute. I will just show you. I'll share my screen for a second. Uh, yeah, uh, let me go into the scanning part. I'll go over here and uh, click one of them. So you have this uh, scanning speed huh, and the data resolution speed. So we have observed that if you do some changes over here, like if you are going for spectra and things like that, if you reduce uh, the scanning speed to around five millimeters per second, your signal becomes very good uh, because it is like you're walking many steps ahead. If you want to have uh, uh, like uh, if you are at high speed, you will definitely miss uh, a lot of bumps from the road. But if you are at lower speed, you are tending to get more bumps off the road because uh, the shock absorber will each and every uh, jerk it will make you feel. And that is why that is the same concept apply over here. If you are speeding, the speed is more, the jerks is less, the chromatograms are smooth and you get better uh, chromatograms. Uh, but if you reduce the you get even the minuscule of the signals which are there and that may add in this uh, spectral uh, scanning it helps you out even the data resolution part it applies the same so the lower the speed the higher but it will directly materialize in your time factor it will increase your analysis time if you are a researcher this may be a good approach but when you're going for an uh, quality control sample you can uh, optimize this to a particular thing 
by default the instrument is set up with certain conditions only and only if you are uh, sure about it make the changes otherwise uh, uh, don't uh, play with this because this may lead to or if you have changed it mention it somewhere in the document uh, so that it it cannot it does not hamper for the next person's work or uh, the normal routine function so this is uh, the pattern for uh, doing a good scanning let me get back uh, then we have another question that is uh, uh, one of the question is uh, if you markers abc have different rf values in the same mobile phase uh, shall uh, shall type this method used for polyherbal formulation yeah absolutely are different rf values is ideal so i think uh, that is a good mobile phase if you wish to ask something else you can just type in or send us at lab at the rate ancrum.in next question for any unknown plant sample how many stand uh, we use to find molecules of interest how many stand for unknown sample okay as i told you go for prominent markers and uh, stop over there don't go for many markers otherwise you will be lost in the research we don't want that we want a stepwise approach go for the prominent markers first if the prominent markers you have finished or they are very few then you can go for sensitive markers but uh, keep the list low at starting otherwise a lot of time and uh, uh, efforts will go wasted can you provide detailed specification of glass plate that you have mentioned sure we'll send you a mail and uh, provide you uh, normally the catalog number is mentioned on to the top of the uh, plate box uh, to the glass plate uh, box plate number is 1.05672 which is the hptlc grade and uh, 5719 uh, which is for uh, tlc grade that is there which we use that you can find out on Merck's catalog uh, also Merck's website uh, sir we have hptlc at our institution uh, except tlc is it possible to get a calibration curves specifically uh, or uh, CV only with densitometry. Definitely, you have a package of visualizer which is there, which needs to be uh, installed. Again, that is based on the pricing and all those things, which uh, is not a part of uh, our discussion. If uh, that package is installed at your facility, you can utilize this, but it will be only subjective to two wave, uh, three wavelengths. That is uh, 254 white and a mixed light. It is not a monochromatic white light. It is a mixed white light which is being reflected and the results are being generated from it. How many samples can be loaded into a 10 by 10? Normally we load with USB parameters. You can load six to seven. You can increase them to eight or nine by reducing the band length. And uh, the space is important. Don't uh, reduce the space too much. Minimum one to two millimeters of space is required so that merging of bands do not take place and also the quantity which you are applying that will be also important so considering these three facts you can design your plate and load your samples that much standard curve will give you LOD LQ directly from the software or we need to calculate no right now LOD LQ is not calculated through the software you will have to run it through an excel sheet by a format we have that format we can send it to you how you can do it with your excel sheet but your excel sheet has to be validated which is the best solvent system for phenol preparation? Uh, uh, phenol separation, we'll have to check out with the uh, PDA, uh, Plant Drug Analysis by uh, Wagoner. So we will just check back and revert back to you for the better uh, phenols. Normally, phenols are, I think, so water soluble, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, water alcohol should do the purpose, but uh, definitely we'll confirm on that. <clears throat> How do HPTLC? In a medicated oil, I would uh, like to know for an alkaloid from medicated oil. Definitely, what you can do is you can go for an uh, 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 basic extraction methodology, methanol with a little bit of ammonia, shake it, freeze it, take the supernatant, analyze on HPDLC and derivatize it with the drag and drop reagent. That should give you an idea. <coughs> what are the criteria for selecting derivatizing reagent? You have a very old book known uh, uh, of Funk and Fisher, uh, Egon Stahl, and even the, uh, our uh, principal, uh, Dr. Eichreich, has written a book on uh, medicinal plants. On that, you can find many uh, ready-made derivatizing reagents, which are selective to many plant compounds, and you can choose between them. Uh, which mobile phase is suitable for separating organic acids? Which derivatizing agent is suitable to view compounds? Um, which mobile organic acids uh, um, okay we have uh, i'll just get back to you right now i don't have the information we have done 
but I'm unable to recollect right now. We'll send you this uh, uh, with the mail. Uh, the advertising also will revert back to you. Next question, SOP of HPTLC, sure. We'll send you, if you go to the HPTLC organization, you can download and standardize the SOP from there and uh, use it for your uh, research work. You can get it over there. And apart from that, we'll also send you the SOP for that. Can we use chromatography from one library and compare the chromatogram via overlay function? <clears throat> No, in the chromatogram library, it compares with the re result that is the correlation factor that is important. It, uh, it will overlay uh, over there. It uh, does overlay and with the correlation factor, actually you determine to what extent it is matching. Anything about uh, point double nine is a good correlation factor. I'm sorry, point nine is a good correlation factor. Lower than point nine is obviously not uh, matching to the best. Uh, Sir, generally, which concentration is suitable to run samples on HPTLC irrespective of specific protocol? This we have already discussed. I told you how we decide based on the, uh, you know, uh, visibility of the sample, uh, how the sample is looking. And based on that, you can take some judgment or uh, it's always an hit trial and hit method. You, you don't have any specific protocol. USP has standardized to 100 mg per ml. You can go for that or else you can see for the sample, uh, you can uh, you have a choice to, uh, based on the label claim and the matrix, you can decide uh, what would be a better. So as I told you, volume optimization is a part of that. We first apply and see how is the response and then only we find out the uh, final suitable uh, concentration. How to analyze essentially, you have to see after running, whether you are getting uh, uh, separated bands or you are getting some dragging, that is the band is spread across. So if uh, it is not giving you clear bands, it means that the overload is there. You have to reduce the volume. Uh, then how to analyze essential oils. There is a fixed essential oil method, which has mobile phase of toluene ethyl acetate 93 is to seven. That can be done. Uh, please tell us basic books uh, for TLC studies. Uh, definitely you have some good old literature of Joseph Sharma books by Joseph Sharma, especially on thin layer chromatography. You have Egon Stahl book on thin layer chromatography for different subjects you have for food analysis, you have PKJ as well for pharmaceutical, there are different uh, angles. Uh, PD SETI, uh, sorry, uh, plant drug analysis by Hilbert Wagner, JB, uh, JB uh, Harbon book on phytochemicals, that is a good book. Uh, these are some of the, uh, even uh, Joseph and Sharma's one dedicated phytochemistry book is there, TLC of phytochemistry, you can also refer to that. These are some of the good books to uh, study upon. Uh, definitely, if you require help. And of course, uh, our uh, book by our principal, uh, by Dr. Ike Reich, sir, uh, that is TLC, THP, TLC of medicinal plants, that also is an interesting book. So do read those, uh, sir, if uh, derivatized with vanillin sulfuric acid, what may be the color of terpenoids? Okay. Uh, I will, uh, I don't have a ready made information because there are different class of in terpenoids also you have subclasses. So it depends upon which subclass you're targeting. And I think so, uh, plant drug analysis by Wagner will can give you some insight based on this. So please refer to that book. It might help you out. Uh, there, apart from that, we'll also do some literature work and send it to you if any paper is available on that. And which mobile phase can be used for L-DOPA? Uh, uh, we had that uh, analysis. Let me just check uh, over here. Okay. Butanol, acetic acid, water, 311 is the mobile phase which can be used. Yeah. And ninhydrin for derivatization. This has been practically done at our facility. Thank you, Abhijit, uh, for giving me this answer. And with this, we have covered many questions. I'm sure you will be having more and more questions, but we are running out of the time and we will have to close the session now. Uh, for those remaining questions, we'll send you reply on your email. So please write to us at lab at the rate and chrome.in. Hope this session was very uh, fruitful to you. With this note, I uh, now uh, would like to uh, sum up this session. Thank you so much. And uh, back to you, Ankita. Thank you, sir. It was a wonderful session. As I can see, there are many qu uh, queries pouring in. So I would like to request everyone to uh, mail their queries at lab at the rate and chrome dot in. And uh, if uh, the certificates will be provided two weeks after today and for any other further training uh, queries and re related to HPTLC, you can always uh, call us in 
and drop your mail at lab at the rate and chrome dot in and uh, there are other webinars also scheduled on different topics we will be sharing that on our social media please do check out so with your permission sir can i end the session yeah sure please thank you all of you stay safe take care bye yes thank you everyone